Hello, hello, and welcome back to Fantabulous Bags, where we do product development sketches for handbags and accessories. So today we're actually going to work on this little cute crossbody. It's a YU Indian knit bag. Some of them are pretty expensive. has a nice little stripe detail and some tassels on the front, and it's got a round bottom, as you can see. So let's go. The first thing we always do is we measure. So I'm going to lay this thing flat because you can. And you can't all do that with all kinds of bags, but this you can. So let's lay it flat and uh, measure a little bit. Okay, so total height is about seven, and the top opening is about seven and a half. Okay, we're just going to do the drop, a standard 18 inch drop for a crossbody shoulder strap. Okay, so this is going to entail a little bit of work on the computer also so that we can get these details in. But let's start with the bag. Okay, so put this over here. Take a good look at your bag and see how it looks. Sit it, fill it with, oh boy, had something in it. And uh, stuff it out, sit it up, do it all different ways so that you can figure out how it is that the bag is constructed. Obviously turn it inside out if it's a soft bag. That's also good. Okay, so it's got like a little kind of a tubular idea. And then it has a rounded bottom. So we'll make a nice rounded bottom. Let's see. There, that's better. Remember, do all your mistakes while you're working with pencil. Get a nice sketch that you like and then proceed from there. Okay, so I'm looking. It has like a little scalloped edge here detail here so let's do that too you don't have to count those because uh, I mean if you want to you can but just mm, eyeball how the size is go ahead and do a similar size it's gonna be something like I don't know 30 something like that 30 little guys there okay now we go to this one and we do the back ones and it has like a drawstring kind of a detail that runs through the bag Okay, so now we have that. Okay, so good. All right, so now the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to look at this bag, and the bottom really ends about to this here. So I'm going to count how many lines of crocheting or whatever this is. So first a scallop, and underneath it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so let's see if we can figure that out. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so it came out to about 20. Okay, so it's close enough. If you want to, we can actually, let's, let's not be silly. Let's go ahead and do what we're supposed to. A little bit longer and a little bit wider, and we'll get our stripes in. All right, or knit in. All right, so let's go ahead, not get ourselves confused. All right, looks fine. All right, so let's go there, and then we'll after we'll draw the rest. Okay, two, three, four. Okay, there. Okay, so I think we got it now. Okay, so the next thing we can do is we're going to very delicately, quickly, draw our knit lines in there. And you got to remember one thing. You're looking at a bag that has a lot of flexibility. It's not this hard leather thing that's just going to look one way, and that's about the size of it. It's got flexibility. The um, stripes are going to vary in width because they're hand done. I mean, it's not going to be that obvious, but when you're drawing it in, you will see. All right. I mean, you could do this on the computer, but I find it easier actually to do it by hand. If you're good at doing it on the computer, please go ahead and try that way. The whole idea of this class is that you should find your own, well, it's hard to say voice, but find your own way of doing art in a nice 
and efficient manner so that you can pump out those specs real quick. All right. Which your boss will hopefully love you for if they appreciate your artwork, okay? All right, so we're getting there. We're getting there, all right. Now, a lot of this stuff is going to get finished on the computer, like the coloration and the textures. All the stuff that is lovely about drawing. Okay, so we're almost there. As we get to the bottom, it gets more and more curved, obviously. All right, so now we have our bag. Ta-da! Now, next thing we're going to look at is, well, we could do the shoulder strap. Usually when I'm doing a crossbody shoulder strap, because they're so high, you can't draw the whole thing in, so I kind of like do some kind of fun twisty thing like this. So that they realize it's a, you know, a long strap and you can still fit it in a pretty um, standard size piece of paper. I mean, if you're drawing at some point, I should do life size drawings because those are very popular with especially factories because if you send it to them, they could just take the life size drawing and pretty much make it into a pattern. Okay, so now... I'm doing the shoulder strap, which is a crossbody. You can see it's very long. And we want to make sure that we get enough detail in there for the sake of the sample room. Okay. You really don't want to like leave the sample room to uh, figure out the details. It's never a good idea. Okay, so next up, this so we see we have two openings here you can draw that in so it's probably around here all right should I look like a little bit closer this one especially is a little too to the side make it a little bit closer get a little bit closer okay so now we're going to draw our of our ropey kind of a little detail for the tassels. Okay, let's look even a little bit closer. It's fine. Okay. Okay. So let's do our rope. Now the rope, I'm going to do a little bit more draw or knot. Make a nice little knot there for your sake of whatever. Okay. And then you put out more rope on each side of it. It's kind of like a karate kind of a gee knot. Okay, very good. And now we're going to do our tassel, which is going to look like this. Now we're going to make them a little bit more involved in all that, just because they're multicolored. I mean, you can color them out on the computer by drawing lines in, but that takes a long time. If you actually go ahead and do them with, um, actually, wait a minute. The tassels I didn't draw right, okay. This part of the tassel doesn't have to be that much, it only is a couple. You want to do it a little bit more accurately because you color it in on the computer it's much easier to do it that way okay so now don't lose too many lines okay so now let's do our beautiful tassels with lots of detail in them figure out what is the main color of the tassels looks to be like a neutral brown and you just give yourself an idea okay so now we're getting there, okay. Okay, so we're gonna count here how many lines we have on the shoulder strap. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so let's do that also. We're going to indicate our lines one two three four. okay there indicating of course if you want to redesign it and make it all different colors or simplify it and you're the designer you can definitely do that if you're not the designer don't even think about it okay okay so now i have few lines here this one got a little bit fat that's fine Ooh, what happened there okay 
whatever. It's into the card. I don't care. <laughs> All right. So we're drawing in our lines. Have to add another one. Add it. All right, there. All right. Yeah, right, almost ready. Okay, so now we have our basic sketch. I'm going to decide what I want to do with this. If I just going to ink this in and apply the colors divergently on the computer, or am I actually going to make the design out of the computer and just colorize it on the computer after it's been digitally transformed? I mean, uh, digitally formed into the... Okay, so here I'm going to make kind of a bumpy texture because it is, in fact, a bumpy little texture that it has. Just remember when you do this and you're going to put it in the computer that you make sure that there's no open spaces because what that's going to read as is an open shape and then you're not going to be able to color it in. And it's a pain in the neck to close it on the computer. So don't do that. Just go ahead and make sure that all your lines are perfectly matched to each other with no gaps. Okay. So there we go. Lump, 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 lump. Not very romantic, but whatever, very lumpy. So here we go. And there we go. I don't know why Indian did this, but he did a nice job. Okay. Or she did a nice job. I don't know who does the weaving. Boys, girls, maybe both. Okay. Here we go. There. Okay. So now we're going to do our rope. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a kind of a staggered look because it does have a staggered look because it's a rope. Okay. Now we're going to give ourselves a little indication of the opening. All right. All right. Let's see how we're doing. Okay, so I'm seeing some holes here that I left. I better close them. Okay, next top part. We're going over all of the edges with a nice brush marker. The brush marker will give you a very good sense of volume. It's going to, some people say it's a little cartoonish, but it adds a lot. It adds a lot. It helps your image have volume in terms of looking three-dimensional as opposed to very flat. Adding shadows when you do your final product. Um, texturizing on the computer will definitely do that for you also, but you want to try to keep it simple by doing a lot on on hand, by hand rather, and then on the computer. Just fill in the details. Okay, so there we go. So let's grab our thin uh, precision, precise pilot pen, and it's a fine line, not a not a, uh, a suit, an extra fine, because that's not a good idea to use it. Okay, so there, we have our knot. Now we're going to do this kind of ropey detail that has there. Okay. All right. Okay, just make sure you get what you want. Enough detail. The devil's in the details. 
It also helps you because this rope detail actually has a lot of colors in it. You want to make sure that you give yourself enough detail to colorize. If not, you'll have to make all sorts of texture maps to get that look and it's a pain in the neck. Well, I find it a pain in the neck. Maybe other people like to do that. I don't know if math is involved because I'm never as good at math and I don't like having to try to figure things out. Okay, so now I'm giving myself a lot of detail in the um, tassel. So because it has a lot of detail, different colors, the base is mostly tan and brown, but it has some pink and some turquoise threads thrown in there just to be pretty. So I'm gonna throw in some, like so. This is great practice for penmanship and other arts. So here, go like that. Okay, so that one, I like that tassel. Let's do the next one. Doing the same thing, adding details, 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 details. Okay. All right, let's do that. Let's go there. All right. Okay, so I think I like this. I'm gonna add one more here, just on the edge. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we could either do the uh, handle, or we could do, let's do the handle because that's a little bit of a difficult thing. I like to do the handles backwards, so I can sit myself down and very carefully make my lines. Remember, there's a lot of detail in this bag. Now, when you're going from hand sketch to digital, the more details you put in the hand sketch, the easier you'll have to make it a digital representation. So let's go ahead and put all our stripes in there. I think I said it was six. We'll find out, okay. So four or five, okay, one more. You don't have to put all of them complete because this, um, because of the turn of the strap, they're all not going to be visible. So let's see. So let's go ahead. Carefully do our stripes. Oh, heavens. Okay, so I have six on each. Okay, so let's keep going. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but when you do this, you think, oh my god, I'm going to be doing this forever. But afterwards, when you're finished, you will be very happy you did sit down and do this work because it makes your uh, sketch go a lot faster once you put it, once you scan it because you have already all the details put in there. Okay, so working, working, working. Don't be afraid to turn your sketch backwards, forwards. Whichever way is easier for you to sketch and draw your lines upside down, this way, that way. Mm-hmm. And the last one, which isn't going to show that much because of the turn of the handle. Get what you can in. Okay. Now we're going back here. Ta-da. Okay, so now we have our little scallop, which has a little bit of a jump to it. It's a little bit of a gray color. We're going to add that. I don't know what's that, but let's get it off the page. All right. Now, 
I like to put my sketch this way because it's easier for me to draw this way. So I'm just putting in some details behind. Okay. So let's go. Remember to keep your lines as even as possible. But if they're not that even, you don't have to worry because you're dealing with a bag that's made by hand. And if you actually look really close, you'll see little, uh, little uh, details that aren't exactly even because, in fact, this was made by hand. You'll see knots and stuff like that where they had to stop and start the weave. Now, I know that if you've ever worked in retail, you've hit upon selling crafty type of things in like Macy's or something. Someone says, oh, you know, this doesn't look exactly like that. And you have to tell them, well, you know, you're dealing with natural product. It's not made on a, on a big plastic producing machine. It's actually made on a hand loom by a person. So it's not gonna be exactly perfect. And that's actually what makes it so beautiful. But some people don't understand that. Anyway, I never liked retail, so <laughs> I'm a terrible person. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. So now the next decision we have to make is how are we going to finish this? Are we going to sit our butts down? Well, actually, we are sitting our butts down. But are we going to sit ourselves down? and do the development of the pattern here or in the computer. That's something you could decide. Or you can just keep drawing. Here we go. All right. Because of the tassels, it's actually saving us a lot of head work. So maybe we'll just sit down and see. We can do it here. All right. We're getting there. As I mentioned before, this bag has a lot of details but it's beautiful and let's get make sure that all of our edges are closed so then when we scan this guy in the computer understands what's closed and what isn't okay so now we have this bag with no details 